Hello friends, I am Jacqueline Clare, spiritual realism artist, and this is Spiritual Conversation, where we emphasize the realism in our explorations of spiritual topics, taking spiritual view on events in the world and getting real about our spiritual growth. And today I wanted to talk about who are you really? Who are you? And this is not to be confused with my Enneagram series. Go check it out, linked below. I think there is great value in understanding personality, typography, and typography, is that right? Typology, personality typology, and uh, yeah, perhaps the terrain of personality as well, and all the archetypal energies involved in our psychological dynamics. Very good, very worthy of learning about. But today I want to take a deeper and in some ways broader approach here. So I was recently in Austin. I spent like a whole day there. I used to live there and I don't anymore. And it's it's grown in intensity. It's become a much more posh city. And it's also a city. And it's so it has just all the energy of a city and it's very image oriented even if there is an undercurrent of slacker hippy dippy woo woo culture there it's still very image oriented and all kinds of images though almost to the extent that now that i'm a little more sensitized to it because I'm not so immersed in that particular city's culture. I see it and I see it almost that people are willing caricatures of certain ideas. Um, whether it's sort of the, the fit woman coming from her yoga class in her workout clothes to Whole Foods or the non-binary green-haired men in the Whole Foods or a big beard and a leather bracelet and and flip-flops going to Zilker Park like there's all these very strong almost cartoons of people and I I don't mean to cast judgment like on those specific choices. I wanted to take that observation and show how we all do that to a certain degree and what that's about and what we're escaping from with that. So in essence, and even for me, so I obviously I spent some time at Whole Foods while I was there, and I, I found this uh, at the same time that I was observing these very strong characters walking around, um, external characters, I also found myself tempted by the different products to like, oh, I can be the woman who buys this organic popcorn. I'm the woman who doesn't eat seed oils, you see. Like, or, oh, when I have a baby, I'll buy you know, the, this kind of baby food. And that is the way marketing works, right? Oftentimes we are not just being marketed the sensibility of a product, like the, the sense that it makes. We are being marketed that we will become this thing if we buy this product. Perhaps you are tempted to buy Lincoln because actually you want to see yourself as Matthew McConaughey and that's why celebrities sell perfume and that sort of thing because the scent is just whatever but it it's meant to evoke this sense of who you will be and who you will feel like and who will be attracted to you if you wear this perfume and these can come in other ways as well but marketing in particular is very much targeted at this impulse of ours to find security in a definition of who we are, you know? And so I am the woman who buys this yogurt, you know? I only do non-fat. I am that woman. Or I am a woman who gets my nails done. 
or it could be where you work, you know, I am a scientist, I, you know, I am in the medical field, and you, you have this sense of false, but temporary, rickety, but nonetheless some sense of security in either your group identity, right, I'm in the medical field, or, you know, I'm part of this marginalized group perhaps, or I am this kind of person who, you know, keeps my house a certain way, or um, keep my lawn a certain kind of way. Like, it isn't just, just like the popcorn isn't just the popcorn, and the keeping the lawn tidy isn't just for the sake of keeping the lawn, lawn tidy. It is this um, mental process of allowing a sense of merged identity with these, what's the word, like material external things, these external things. I work for this company. I am a mom. I am a dog person. Or it's also elements of our personality, like I'm a dog person, I'm a cat person. I'm just that guy who tells jokes at the water cooler, right? I'm just that guy. Or I'm just the guy who goes to the grocery store in his pajamas. I just don't care. I'm that guy. And, and that's when you know that you are falling into this trap. It's, it's a trick of our ego, of that part of ourselves that is there to block out the reality of our spiritual nature. Of course, we can do this about spiritual things too. That gets extra tricky. I am a person who meditates. I am a person who does yoga. But it's still trying to find some sort of sanctuary in a definition of who we are. And this is also something very, very much that is played on in the pride movement, in the LGBT, all that stuff and very, very, um, with great cost with the trans movement because it's playing on this fact that none of us know who we are or feel secure in that. And we're being sold this idea, whether it's the popcorn or the flip-flops or the leather bracelet or is transition surgery or it's joining a community of marginalized people, we're being sold this idea that you may not know who you are, but you can know who you are and you can become that person. Just buy this, do this, take this, join this, etc. And here's the big thing. None of those work, they are all distractions, they take you further from, from, from who you are. And who you are cannot be put into words. We cannot describe this even saying, you're light, you're energy, you're a child of God, all of these things. They are maybe closer to the point, but they are still these impotent efforts to, to define that thing and give you a sense of security. And again, though those things might be somewhat closer to the truth, the reality of who you are is found in the space between, in groundlessness. In this mystical book of the Baha'i Faith that I've spent a lot of time loving and studying called The Seven Valleys. And it, it's the, the seven stages of spiritual growth towards attaining the presence of God. It goes through the valley of search and the valley of wonderment and all these things. And the final valley is that of true poverty and absolute nothingness, which sounds like a bit of a letdown. And again, I don't pretend to understand it in any sort of like encapsulated way. But where I am in this understanding, what I wanted to share with you is that like this, the empty space in an atom that our highest nature is actually in that no thing in that nothing where we are more of a space for God to move through us 
and the best gift that I have for you at this time in my understanding about how to live more in that space and grow more towards that, which is a, a second by second, day by day thing, is really just to hear yourself and catch yourself in those moments of wanting to define who you are and find security in that. I am a person who resents so-and-so. I am a person who is well-informed. I am a person who eats cookies before dinner and doesn't care. Like, whatever crazy thing your mind comes up with, I wear Levi jeans. You know, whatever it is where it's trying to catch and hold on to something, to find an identity. Even I am married to so-and-so. You know, like whatever it is where you're, it, it isn't just, like I said, mowing your lawn for the sake of mowing your lawn. It becomes a thing of, I am a person who mows my lawn. I am a person who lives in that house with a well-mowed lawn. When it's trying to take it on and, and finding a merger with that external thing to be that person. And as a side note, you will... Babies do that. Children do that. They they um, they think everything is one, and then their toys. You take them away, and it's like they lost a limb because they have identified. They have merged with this thing, which is not who they are, and it's not who you are. It's not who I am. So, again, that can be your practice to start to notice and hear those definitions of who you are, and understand that it is. It's a chimera. It's a distracting false way to actually keep you from the truth of who you are. And in those catching those moments and breathing into it and feeling that flutter of openness and uncertainty that's the space where you're living without false safety rails of who you are well thank you for taking that deep dive with me my friends be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments like this video subscribe let your friends know about it linked below you'll find different ways to support this channel and ways to get in touch with me until next time my friends i wish you the best for playing your unique part in making this world a more courageous and beautiful place i'll catch you next time bye bye